Item A is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute an independent contractor agreement with environmental differences in the amount of $16 per hour per laborer to provide necessary laborers as manual labor projects. Uh, that is my motion. Can I get a second? Got a motion and a second by Commissioner Wynn. Any questions, Commissioner Lucas? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I was going to move to approve um, items A, B, C, and D. Okay. Yeah, my <laughs> All right. Uh, Commissioner Wynn, did you have anything further on That's that? That's what I was going to do, too. <laughs> okay. Uh, Commissioner Watkins. And, and my questions were more broad, so that'll work for me once I, once I'm, yeah. Um, but I, I've heard you say that the, I've heard it, and I heard it mentioned in the last meeting, too, that the rate was $12 an hour that we were looking to have the employees be paid. And if you can show me in this first contract, it'll satisfy me, but I don't see that um, at, in the contract that we have in the in the documentation i see the 16 and the 40 pounds and the eight hours but i don't see any consideration of that type of phrase and i'm sure it's here i just it's a lot of documents too 45 pages so i'm very easily could have missed that line yeah I, i'll ask the attorneys to come forward on that uh just to assure commissioner watkins that that was part of our invitation to bid and we only selected those that could pay at least that amount and my other question while they're working on that was if we're twelve dollars if we were hiring full-time labor or if we were hiring someone, I guess even as a temporary seasonal employee for the county, what does that equate out to? Like, because I, 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 I know a lot of this theory is that the $16 that we pay is ultimately less than what it would cost us to pay a part-time employee because of taxes and benefits and that type of thing. So I'm just curious. 18, I don't think it'll affect me either way, but I'm just curious. Right. Uh, the, our lowest salary is around 26000 which is like twelve fifty an hour. But then you add on benefits, which is about 30 to 40% of that. So it would easily be $17, $18. Okay. So and that would be for a full-time employee? Yes, sir. How would that change for a part-time or a seasonal, like, well, like a lifeguard? Offer, we don't offer benefits. Um, but again. So if we paid a – so wait a minute. If we paid like a temporary employee – on a short-term contract, fourteen dollars an hour, and he worked directly for us. That w that would be a flat for what 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 uh, something else is added on to that, right? Uh, well, the time it takes for us to go through the hiring process and things of that nature. But as far as salary to that person, um, no. So it would be cheaper than the sixteen dollars. Okay. Here. Yes, technically yes, because okay. the only okay. thing they're getting is a salary. But again, that's seasonal temporary but in this case uh, and that's the same i mean that would be the equivalent yeah so yeah. and again i guess it gives us more quibbles quibbles so to speak more tools in the toolbox more tools right. in the toolbox but not not really a cost saving mechanism yeah. not really a, allowing us any well I, I think the cost savings in the in in the overall big picture thank you all right i think it's a cost savings in the big picture um, again, investment in the community, helping people get the jobs. Uh, I mean, but if we want to empower available. people, we would pay them the $16 an hour or $15 an hour, and they could be part-time staff with the Macon Bibb County, and that's way more empowering and uplifting than what, well, well, again, we go, it, Well, it's a process also. When you're talking about empowering people, we go through a whole uh, regiment of hiring um, as we advertise, drug tests, background, things like this. These are people and that— These are things we're clearly we, expecting out of our temp agency, right? Well, their We're process, their process, their process is different than ours, and they incur the cost of that process. We don't incur it. payroll, all those be behind the scene costs. So yes, so uh, they 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 incur all those costs. Attorney McNeil, you want to you want to answer that that other question? Or you want Attorney Groover to answer? So the um, the contract incorporates into it the RFP that was published. And so just looking at the first one, um, on page, um, page four. 17, it's page four of the exhibit, page 17 of the PDF, it says vendors shall compensate day laborers at a rate no less than $12 an hour. That was, that was published as part of the RFP, and that's incorporated into each of these four contracts, those, those terms and requirements. So if I'm right, that's the RFP that you're reading? Right, it's but the like RFP. we're not actually in the contract that the vendor has with us. He's not reconfirming that. The Am RFP I? is an exhibit to the vendor contract, so okay. it's it's part of it. Yes, sir. So just just 
it would have eased my mind a lot. It seemed like in that compensation section, if it would have covered such a thing, but there. But that's because it's implied, and clearly everyone understands that it's implied. I'm not an attorney, but it's clearly implied. No one would make the mistake of paying somebody ten dollars an hour because we clearly, explicitly said twelve here. Right, they would be in breach of the contract if they're okay. paying less than that. Understood. Yes, sir. Understood. Okay. Thank you. I think one other thing to to add to this, not to belabor the point, is that each of these companies can provide anywhere from 10 to 20 people that we need. So we have four of these folks that we could, if we needed 60 or 80, uh, we could get fairly uh, quickly and easily. We tell them where to report at, how much it is, um, I mean, how many people we need, and we go accordingly to the, what they may have in their in their um, in their bucket there. But we can't do that. I mean, we we've had we tried to fill positions for solid waste, parks and beautification, and public works, and with the turnover that we've had, we've been able to fill those positions. So it would help, and I think, Mr. Watkins, you you have um, advocated for getting grass cut on a, on a more regular basis. Uh, we can't do it with the staff. Uh, we went through some numbers with you to uh, indicate how much, if we were to do that that many times, how much it would cost. Uh, we couldn't even provide the personnel to do that on a hiring basis. So this is just to actually help us be more efficient. Whether we choose to use them or not, it's gonna be based on the needs. It's not just these these groups as well. Uh, Bowden needs grass cut out there. Instead of hiring a four-time person to cut grass at Bowden, you've got that. Uh, you've got the uh, Public Works. We've also got, um, I think Tobisovsky, instead of hiring a full-time maintenance person, and you can't use jail labor out there, they've, they've got people there as well. Um, all those folks uh, are asking for people that we can't provide them as far as the, the number of workers there. So th this goes to all of it. And I do believe we have a motion to do A, B, C, and D all at one time, and we've had an agreement on that. Uh, Commissioner Bronson, did you have a question? I'm sorry. Hey, uh, just out of curiosity, where are we at? Well, <laughs> my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> my apologies. And where are we at with like adopt a road type programs? How we are we are we managing or tag team with them to kind of come in? Or are we promoting that deal where, if a church wanted to adopt a, a right of way or whatever it may be, that they can go out and and they be in charge of cleaning that area up? Or, I mean, that, I think that would kind of be the route to take in this situation here to uh, minimize. That's going to be part of the clean streets matter. We've had it before. It's, it's kind of been abandoned. 